Back here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, we continue our red flag situation after a 15-car crash. And what IndyCar officials have decided, they've allowed the 19 cars that are still running to go back to their pit stalls. They will replace tires. And uh, any other further changes, we will uh, let you know exactly how that continues to unfold. Now, there is Ryan Briscoe. He made it through the carnage, and he is with Rick. Yeah, let's talk. You you had the advantage of being ahead of the accident, so you didn't see it happen, but you came back around and saw what was on the track. What was your first thought when you came by? Uh, well, honestly, you know, I was, I was looking for power, <laughs> you know, and um, just feel really terrible that uh, that he's out, and I know it's not the way Frank Kitty wanted to win the championship, but um, really heartbreaking for Team Penske and all of us that have worked so hard, but uh, I tell you, I've never seen anything like it. The debris... Uh, we all had to drive through the lap later. Um, it, it looked like a, a war scene from Terminator or something. I mean, it was just there were there were just pieces of metal and car on fire in the middle of the track with no car attached to it and just debris everywhere. So it was uh, it was scary and, and and you know the first thoughts open that nobody's hurt because I mean there's just stuff everywhere. I mean crazy. Um, now you said a little bit earlier in the race you had actually had contact with somebody. Yeah, um, Tagliani got into my back tyre and uh, I think we almost caused the big one a few laps before, you know. I think there's we can just run so close together at the moment uh, on this circuit, um, but we're doing 220 plus mile an hour and it doesn't take much for something bad to happen and, uh, you know, I was lucky um, that, that nothing bad happened. It, it's going up the back straight and next thing I felt the car just turned sideways when, uh, when Tags got into me, but uh, thankfully we got away with that one, but uh, I guess the guys a bit further back didn't. Once again, Ryan Briscoe sitting aside waiting for the race to restart. Well, and everybody who thinks that uh, racing has become oh so safe, I think you just found out uh, it has its moments and it has some very scary moments. We have no further information as of this point. IndyCar officials are working to get updated information to us. As soon as they do, we will pass along. We will do no speculation whatsoever on the condition of any of the drivers until we get official word or can talk to them. You guys have been in these crashes, uh, maybe not as severe as a 15-car pileup. Uh, what goes through drivers' minds? Let's take first off the guys that are involved in the scenario. Well, in this particular situation, I mean, you're really wondering about what the other drivers, what kind of injuries, if there is injuries, what's going on with that. And when we get into a car, and Eddie, you know, we all know this, we understand that there could be an accident. We understand that there can be a big one, but it doesn't make you feel any better when you step out of the car knowing that there actually has been an accident and there is injuries. And we understand we're going to hit the wall. We understand there will be injuries. Or we understand there will be times where we're actually not able to drive for maybe a month or two, or Justin Wilson this year being out for the remainder of the season after Mid-Ohio breaking his back. But this still shocks us when there's a situation when there's a lot of bad injuries and we don't know the outcome yet. I think it's not knowing, but one thing that you hit upon that is very true is that that is a group of people that are together on the racetrack when they're traveling, partying, uh, arguing, but they're always friends. They, they all fly together. They, they have their debriefings. They're all, they've known each other throughout their career. So when something like this happens, everybody in that pit right now is praying for whomever is involved in the accident and it, and it is just it's just so disheartening to see something like that happen but when you're going those speeds and you have that many cars on the track we've always known that things like this right. could happen there's just there's just too many cars on too easy of a track to drive on Dario Franchitti and Scott Dixon talking over you saw just a few shots ago uh, work going on on the safer barriers but more importantly the catch fence as several cars got up into that fence it has to be repaired Let's talk about those safer barriers because 15 cars and without those safer barriers, I think this would have been even more difficult to be talking about than it is right now. And Marty, this is something that the Indianapolis Motor Speedway over a decade ago started working on. It's a steel and foam energy reduction system. And you can see the concrete wall on your right hand side, the absorbing foam there in the middle and then the steel reinforcement there on your left hand side. And before, Eddie, as we know, when we hit the wall, it was concrete. Now when you hit these walls, they call them soft walls. No, they are not soft, but they absorb a lot of the impact. A lot of the type of forces that we used to see when we hit the concrete are now removed. And sometimes drivers can step away from the car after hitting that softer barrier where they would not have when they're hitting the concrete. But the cars have become safer. The tracks are becoming safer. We all worry about the catch fence. 
The 2012 car is coming on board. It has been designed and built with safety in mind, a larger cockpit area, safer for the drivers, but we can't make sure that we're taking care of everything that's out there that we have no control of. Sometimes. It is physically impossible to build a car and a track that can take care of all the circumstances mm -hmm. that happen when you have cars crashing at 220 miles an hour. But we have to remind everybody of all the advances that have gone into that mon those monocoques that you see right there have just withstood incredible an incredible accident. And we see a lot of the drivers getting out, walking around. That looked to me like an airplane airplane crash. And the walls, the walls absorb, it's, it's no longer, like you said, a cement wall that just pushes you back. It absorbs probably 50% of the energy that has to get dissipated over time. The worst accidents are the ones when you see a car in a very clean, just one thump and it stops. But when they bounce and turn and spin and things fall off it, that's actually a good accident because you're dissipating all of that energy. Energy, exactly. As some of the drivers can discuss it down on pit lane, as uh, we've got uh, Danica Patrick also down on pit lane. And let's go back and show you her view one more time from her on board and how she made it through. Now she's in the right place. Again, she's on the bottom of the track. This accident originated up high and migrated down. She's very lucky that this car does not come down in front of her. Now there's nothing, this is seen in slow motion, there's nothing you can do or in the car. You make one decision and at those speeds you have to stick to it. You cannot weave at 220 miles an hour up the track and down the track. Rick DeBrule is with her. Yeah, standing by with Danica, you saw how close that was and they were just talking in the booth about how you almost don't have time to react. Um, gosh, you know, I was really nervous coming into today and, and why is because I, I knew that you were going to, as a driver be put into positions to where you were going to have to either decide to flat out and possibly be a part of something like that or look like a wimp and lift but you know what I, I lifted a little I mean I, I mean there's just a lot going on out there and it's way 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 too early to be you know getting runs and not lifting in the middle of the corner you know feel out your car get used to it see how it changes over the run I mean I was running the bottom I started getting a little bit of push on the bottom so you just kind of lift a little going into the corner keep it under control make an improvement on a pit stop but I'm sure there was some things that happened that were out of anyone's control and definitely there were a lot of cars that were in it that um, shouldn't have been in it but uh, you know I hope I mean the first thing I said was wow and then I said I hope everybody's okay because it was um, it was like a movie scene. It was, you know, which they try and make look as, as gnarly as possible. And it was debris everywhere across the whole track. There was, you could smell the smoke. You could see the billowing smoke on the back straight from a car. There was, there was a chunk of fire that we were driving around out there. And then you just see cars scattered. And it was, you know, I mean, I hope, I hope everyone's okay. I, I, I know we haven't maybe heard about Dan and that's just, you just don't want to have to be in that position, you know? We shouldn't have to. We had talked to you about the emotions coming into this final race, what it was going to be like for you today. Uh, obviously, this just takes it in a whole different direction. Well, that's what we were talking about. You know, you have, you have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose, except I have everything to lose. You know, it's all, it's all that sort of emotion wrapped in one, because I, I want to finish well, and I want to do well. I don't want to, I don't want to be in an accident like that. And I know right, I know what's, my instincts are, are decent enough to try and not get a part of that but it's going to come down to more of that in this race i think i mean it's going to not be quite as bad if there's not so many cars but hopefully it will just get everyone to straighten up and think you know what let's just be calm let's get down to the last 20 or 30 laps let's get down to the last pit stop even um because i, I mean in my position i have nothing to lose and i have everything to lose are you concerned at all about finishing this race no i'm not i, I mean i i I know how to finish the race, um, unless of course you're caught in something that you can't, that is unavoidable. But you know, it was, I was just talking to my dad and he was like, you know, it's a good thing you weren't up top. And I drove down the bottom for the first, uh, you know, five or six laps and started getting a little tight. So I thought, you know what, I'll pop up high and see if I can just kind of get a more consistent run because I was getting passed on the outside. Got up high and that's kind of where all the chaos was. There's cars sliding all around and, you know, darting lanes and moving and, you know, just taking up the track and making it three wide and, um, you know, chopping in front of me. And so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna get down to the bottom again. I might push a little on the bottom, but it's gonna be consistent. So in my long-winded answer, <laughs> um, I, I feel like I, can finish this race it's just a matter of you know how many how many how many cats do you want to sacrifice in the process how many lives do you have 
Danica Patrick, uh, going to go back out and finish this race and hopefully put one last IndyCar race under her belt. Standing by with Tony Kanaan, and uh, Tony Kanaan, if there was uh, ever a day to be on the pole and be out in front of the field, certainly today is the day and uh, be able to avoid all that. Is this an unavoidable part of pack racing that we're seeing here today? Yeah, Vince, when, uh, when you're asking for a track like this with the cars that we have, uh, it's a potential for disaster. And uh, you have some guys getting excited out there when we were racing so close. One mistake can take 15 people out, and that's uh, what happened there. Uh, I've never seen such a mess in my entire career in the racetrack the way I saw. Really concerned about Dan right now. Uh, it's going to be quite hard to keep your head straight just to do this race again. Uh, I know the, the fans want to watch it. The fans want to watch at home here. But uh, right now, I think uh, we need to rethink about the way we're doing things in the racetrack sometimes because uh, it's definitely not a good feeling. Certainly, you're one of the senior members of the uh, driving community. Is there a message you want to maybe deliver to some of the, the other drivers? Will you get the guys together and, and gals and, and discuss it? We can try to get together, but I think the message was sent half an hour ago and what happened. So everybody's looking for a win. I know this is a competition and you got to win races and you have to perform. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just a race, and uh, we have to take care of each other. I mean, we're playing with lives here, so uh, we'll try to get drivers together, but uh, they should watch the tape and realize that we need to take care of each other. When you are racing in the pack, though, Tony, what option do you have? It is wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. It is inches apart. Uh, what other option do you have? Pray. You just got to pray because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, things happen so quick that uh, one little mistake, it's not even on purpose, it's going to take everybody out and that's the price of uh, you know the pack racing so uh, there is not a lot to do there is no driver's skill when uh, somebody hits uh, you know hit wheels in front of you and you can't you can't stop you're doing 220 miles an hour and, and is it realistic to ask drivers to give each other more room well we can only we can always ask you know i think uh, what, ha what happened this afternoon it's a proof that uh, we should give each other a little bit more room. So I'm going to keep asking, although uh, I don't know if it's going to help. But uh, as uh, one of the senior members, I'm going to get Dario and the other guys, and we're going to try to get together and tell the guys to use their heads. And uh, let's play the last 30 laps. You know, uh, we're not going to win the race right now. Thanks, TK. Marty. All right, thanks, Vince. As uh, we continue this red flag situation after a huge 15-car pileup, at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and where we wanted to celebrate the crowning of a champion. Well, the champion's been crowned, but nobody's cheering right now. We'll be back after this message from our ABC stations.